going to preach to you that is entitled Reckless Love. But allow me to explain this title. Because God could never be reckless with his love to us. He always gave us, in accordance with his sovereignty, in accordance also of what, what we need. When I say reckless love, this is not applied to God, but this is actually applied to us that there are times that sometimes when we love somebody, we are going to ask for something in return. But in reality, when we, when we love somebody, despite of what he did, we continually love that person. Maybe you call that reckless love. Maybe there's somebody you try to help, you're trying to help him or her, but despite of, you know, the help that you have given to this person, you're still the bad person. Maybe you call this reckless love. But again, in the sight of God, there is no reckless love. Because according to his sovereignty and according to his wisdom, everything has been planned. Please open your Bible with me. Now before we will look at Matthew chapter 25, let me build here the foundation. So that we will be able to know that love, the love of God that is in our heart, it, it is not enough just staying in our heart. It must result into action. So let me establish so that I have the foundation to explain to you about this truth. Now, look at your Bible with me in 1 John, now chapter 3 to 17. Now, chapter 3, verse 17. Now, I want you to look at this. It says, if anyone has material possessions, is there anybody here have material positions? How come there were only two? Yeah. You're afraid with that verse? If anyone has material position and sees his brother or sister in need, but has no pity on him, what? How can the love of God be in him? And that's why we could never Say that I love God, but we hate our brother because we are a liar. Now, now this verse is a question of what? Putting the love of God that is in us into action. Now, the inaction of the person is what is the evidence that the love of God is not in that person. So we couldn't just say, you no, know, in action, doing nothing, looking the person who have in need. Why? Because that person, you never know. Anyway, I'm going to explain that later. Now, the love of God, it becomes what? A driving force for us to help those who are in need. Again, because of the love of God that inside of us, it becomes a driving force for us to push to help that person, whatever his or her needs. Now, I want you to bring also to James chapter 2, verse 16. It says there, If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well, keep warm, and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? Or maybe during in the winter time, Oh! Be warm. Give him a jacket. A winter jacket. When he also will fed, give him a bread. Now I look at the word here. The word wish. The Webster Dictionary defined the word wish as what? Expression of desire to someone. You just express but what? Done nothing. Now what? What is good you could get? If you will say, I wish that, you would find some solution of your problem. The word there is, you just desire, but then nothing, what, what good you could get? Nothing is one. Now, it will help me now bring to the text that I'm going to expound to you, that is in Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 to 36, but allow me to establish the context of this passage. If you look at the chapter 25, this is the end time 
we call this a parabolic prophecy. When I say parabolic, it's a parable. But it deals with the end time. Now, here, and during the end time, you would be able to see that there is a separation of the goat and the sheep. When I say goat, oh, naku, masarap to, papayitan to eh. When you say goat, is actually the non-believer. When you say the goat, is actually the unrighteous people. But on the other side, the sheep is what is the righteous, the believer. But if you notice here, if you look at this passage, the word here was actually used is past tense. The word was. Why? Because this has happened what? A parabolic prophecy, it deals with the end time in the future. But it's already done. The action has been done. This is during the judgment time. Now, I, I marked there the word I. How many times? How many times the word the personal pronoun is repeated in the two verses. Let me go back there. How many times? If you could count it. How many times? Six times. Now, there must be something that is very important that Jesus Christ, remember Jesus Christ is talking to the righteous. He's talking to the ship. Now, the word there, I, the first personal pronoun repeated six times. There must be a purpose. Now, who is this I? It is the speaker, and that is Jesus himself. Now, here, Jesus Christ was talking to the, right, to the righteous, to the sheep. Now, what he is doing here, he said, Lord, where did we see you that you are what? Hungry and feed you. Lord, when did we see you that you are thirsty and give you water. And he said, Lord, when did, when did we see you that you were a stranger and we invited you in? When did we see you that you, have, you need clothes and we clothe you? This statement, it shows that the ignorance of rendering mercy to those who are in need. No, I, I want you to think about this. Because Jesus Christ is talking to the ship. Who is the ship? The righteous. Who's that righteous? We. Now, imagine the church of Jesus Christ. They don't practice mercy to those people who are in it. The righteous, they're ignorant. It comes on being merciful to those who are in it. How, how is the prayer lines church? How are we the other side of being ignorant? Are we aware that we should be showing mercy to those people who are in it? Mm -hmm. Now, this is the response of Jesus Christ. No. It says in verse 40, it says, the king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers, what of mine you did to whom? For me. Now, I like this because one of the emphasis of the book of Matthew is about the kingdom of God. And here it is. In, in the kingdom, there is always a king. It's funny because there was uh, one religion... Is they have this kingdom hall, right? And there was a guy who was running to the kingdom hall and he's looking. Have you seen the king? Because it's a kingdom hall. When you say a kingdom hall, there must be a king. But he said, oh, we don't have a king here. Then it must not be a kingdom hall. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, you would see here the word king. In that kingdom, there is a king. Who is the king? The king is the highest authority. And even the king is the law himself. But in that king, there is a citizen in that kingdom. Now, I believe that people loves what? People loves to do. To serve their king because he is a king. But what about the least person in the kingdom? 
nobody would like to serve the least person in the kingdom. If the prime minister will come, I believe everybody wants to serve the prime minister. But if there is a homeless that would come, nobody would like to serve the homeless person. But now here it is. What it says there? You did not only do. No, let me explain this a little bit. So what you have done to the least person, you are actually, what? What you have done, you do this in behalf of a king. So when the person does something, he is not just doing for the least person in the kingdom. And in reality, he is doing for the king. Now, let me give you this uh, a joke. Because you become so serious, I could see in your face. What do you call the two spiders that just married? No. Okay, what do you call? Newly webs. Now, what do you call with the new, newly webs that keep fighting each other? Do we have that here? A spider. No, you know what? No, sometimes there's so much fine thing. When the church becomes a focus of inside, of loving ourselves, loving inside the people inside the church, I tell you, there will be a spider fighting each other. But when we start loving people outside the church, it's just so different. Now, let me... Why Jesus uses... The personal pronoun, I. Why? The, the first personal pronoun, I, it is by what? Representation. Again, I is by representation. When, if you look at that verse, for I was hungry, what? You gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When, when I was a stranger, what? You have invited me in. When I needed clothes, what? You have clothed me. When I was sick, what? You look after me. When I was in prison, what? You came to visit me. Now, physically, the king was not there. But the one who received the goodwill... It is what? The less person in the kingdom. Now I call this concept, I call this as what? Reciprocal concept. What you have done to the child of God, it is what? Reciprocated to our heavenly father. Again, let, can you follow after me? What we have done, again, what we have done, Okay, again, again, again. What we have done, it reciprocated to our Heavenly Father. Do you get it? Okay. What does it mean? No, it means that whatever we have done to the child of God, it joined, it shared, it become common, it become mutual, it become communal to our heavenly father. So whatever you have done to the least person, whatever you have done to one of our fellow believers in this church, it reciprocated to our heavenly father. It becomes common. It becomes mutual. It becomes a community. It doesn't just belong to the person that you have done. In reality, you have done it to our heavenly father. Wow. Wow. Whatever we have done to our fellow believers, it reciprocated to our Heavenly Father. When we give food, when we fix their vehicle, when 
when we share some little amount of money, when we watch the kids of somebody because the mother or the father, they have something very important to do. You, not, you are not only doing this in behalf of somebody. You are doing this in behalf of our king, in behalf of our heavenly father. What is the difference between neurotic and psychotic? Now, of course, the spelling is different. <laughs> the psychotic things, what? Two plus two is five. A neurotic knows that two plus two is four, but it worries him a lot. No, no, sometimes we're afraid to let go of what we have in our hands because we worry so, so much that there's nothing left. But we know for a certain that God will provide. But the only thing, there is so much worries in our life that it doesn't help. But we know for a certain that God will provide. So, are we uh, psychotic or? <laughs> uh, sometimes both. <laughs> anyway, why we are not able to use the love of God to transform the lives of the people around us? Why? My friend, we're living in a society that is very selfish. Oh, you know what? We only think about our shop. When we have money, when we have extra time, we all, we're only thinking about our shop. There's only one, there's only one concern that we have is our shop. I don't know when you receive money, I don't know what's in your mind, you always think about what about myself? Have you come, have, have the idea cross into your mind? Now because you have money, you could be able to share the amount to those people who are in it. Second, this society had been educated not to stop updating. Oh, we need to update our, our cell phone. I, I have a Samsung Note 3, but my Samsung Note 3 is still at 2.4 gigahertz. I could not connect anymore to the Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi is 5.4 gigahertz. Now I update to Samsung 8. We, what? We update our computer. What we update? We update our, oh, I like that. What else we update? We update our house. Oh, three rooms? I think that's not enough. I need to update it. What else we update? Oh, we update our appliances. Our TV becomes 75 inches. <laughs> now, I want you to think about this. This world, this society, we're bombarded so much with all those TV ads that keep telling us you need to update because it is necessary. And we go through how this world doctrinated us and we say yes. When we keep updating, updating, at the time that you already paid off, the one item instead of, you know, trying to save the money so would you be able to help somebody who are in it. But what happened? What happened? We update. Anyway, I already paid off the vehicle. I'm going to get a new one. Now what will happen? If there's somebody will come to you for help, there is nothing left that you could help. <laughs> Third, this society is what holding a wrong doctrine or wrong teaching. Maybe you hear this. I work so hard for my money. 
So I am what? Entitled to be happy. And maybe you hear this as well. Oh, this is a hard-earned money. I could not just give it to a lazy person who don't want to work. Right? My friend, if we have this wrong understanding, a wrong doctrine of keeping these material things in this world, uh, maybe you'll be saying, why would I share my hard-earned money to somebody who don't want to work? Can we just pause for a moment? And let's look at the reverse of the situation. Let's think about this, that you are the one who is homeless, that you are the one who is in need, and the other way around. No, we should be thankful that we are the one that have something. And because of that, we want to give so that those people who are in need could feel that there is the God who loved them through us. Now, if you are going to withhold the blessing that God has intended for somebody, that person will keep asking, is God really exist? Why? Because there's somebody who are holding the blessing that that person could appreciate that God would provide their needs. Oh, you hear this also. Oh, you know what? If I'm just giving this to somebody who don't want to work, they're just taking advantage on us. I mean, again, let's put this in a reverse way. Do you want that people, those who are in need, will take advantage on you, or you will be the one to take advantage on them? Think the other way. But despite of that, even though they will take advantage of God's provision that, that you have given to them, even though they have taken advantage of the blessings of the mercy of the love that has given to you, but I tell you, my friend, one of this day, that person whom you give the love of God to that person, one of this day, that person will be convicted by the love of God. That's why we never stop. Loving the person despite whatever the response of that person. How can we apply the truth today with this kind of society? What? This society is what? Selfish. This society is never stop updating. And this society is have a wrong doctrine of understanding the material things. Now, how can we apply the truth today? You know, first, I know this is hard. Right to define this is hard. First, we must save money to show the love of God to others. We will save money, not for ourselves. We will save money for those who are in need. Many times we are caught up with what? With our needs and the needs of others. Now you want to help, but the only thing, your pocket is empty. You want to give something that somehow the word that you say, oh, may the Lord bless you. That's not enough to say that. There must be something that is tangible that you could give to that person. That person somehow would say, praise the Lord, I have something to buy. But when that will start, we need to start saving money so we could be able to show the love of God to those who are in need. Second, the love of God in our heart will push us to act upon if we claim that we are Christians. The love of God that is in our heart that should push us to influence that person by giving them what they need. My friend, bawal ang utang sa simbahan. Hindi pwede ang utang because there is a consequence of having an utang with our fellow believers. Now first, it will create conflict. Now second, we will create a wrong impression to the person that they don't need God, they just need you. What I'm trying to say, if you're going to help somebody who would be asking for financial help, give him or her something that you could afford. But don't make it as a debt or as an utang. Make that as your expression of love to that person. Say, I, I don't have 
in, I don't have enough money to give you what you need. But I have $500 here. This is not an otang, but this is my expression of love to you. That I love you as my brother or sister in Christ. Kung pautangin niyo siya, tapos hindi siya makabayad, he will not come back to church. There was a joke in, uh, in the Philippines that one of the congressmen is filing uh, a law that utang is not allowed anymore because it causes conflict with the relationship. Oh, I hope that would be, we, we should have here in, in Canada because I have heard there are lots of conflict because of money, even inside the church. That's why, wag nyo silang pautangin, but give them the love that God has put in your heart. Okay? Nobody would say amen. I don't know why. Maraming utang. Patay tayo dyan. Okay. Deciding to show the love of God is not counted. If you say, oh, I have a desire to help you, but the only thing, I don't have money. Hindi yan pwede. You know the passage that I quote in 1 John. And also in James. Words is not enough. There must be an action of our love. So that's why you say, if I have money, I tell you, if you say the word, if, no, no. There's no time that you will have enough money before you would get we just share what we have. Let's share of what we have. No words without action is dead. The love of God must be seen in actions. Now third, what we have done, what? It reciprocated to our heavenly Father. Now we are doing this for one reason. No, we don't want, we are, do, we are not doing this because to, to publicize that I'm doing this, not like all those politicians back in the Philippines or wherever, you know, usually the, 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 the politician, they will always emphasize that this is what I have done. That's why you need to vote me. No, we are not a politician. We are Christians. There's only one thing that makes us why we need to help because we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, because of that love, we want to share this love to somebody that somehow that person will be able to experience that God loved him or her so much. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to what? To do good works. Now, let me tell you this story. Now, I could remember in our seminary, it is a five years the seminary. In the third year, we're, we're going to have what we call the Sunday ministry. The Sunday ministry, we're assigned to a certain church. And then we'll be going there during Sunday morning. If it's too far, we need to, we need to live in the seminary campus at Saturday afternoon. There is a seminary student. He need to drove 30 miles before he would arrive to the church that he were that he, that he were assigned. Along the way, as he was driving, there is a hitchhiker, and he stop over, and this hitchhiker went to his car, and then. The hitchhiker looked at him and he said, Are you going to church? It's Sunday morning. To make the long story short, they went to church and after worship, there is one family who asked her if they could have a dinner together in their home. Now this lady went to the house and they have this um, a wonderful food, they have a wonderful dinner together. And after that, he was, she was able to have a shower and prepare himself to live. But before that, the horse, he bought a bus ticket. And the horse gave her 
of $50 that somehow she could use it along the way as she will travel. After a few weeks, the seminary student received a letter. And in that letter it says, thank you so much for being so generous. Actually, I'm already on the way of running away from my family, running away from my three kids, running away from my husband. But because of the love of God that you have shown to me, you have influenced me to go back to my family and be with them again. And he said, thank you so much. Because of the love that you have shown to me, we are now happy as a family. My friend, when we show God's love, we actually influence somebody. That that person, he will make or she will make decisions. That one of this day, she will make a decision to follow the Lord. Let me conclude this physical illustration. I need two volunteers. Okay, Bob. And Jivum. Come on, Jivum. Let me explain to you. There is a bucket of water here. This is illustrate of the love of God. When we believe and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, this illustrate our song as a Christian. Do you remember when you were baptized? Your sack, your soak to the water. Okay, yes, okay. And these two glass here, it represent the people around us. If you see this, where is the water now? It's inside of this foam, this pants. The only thing that, the only thing we could do in order for the water to come out, Bob, can you put the water on the uh, Peel it, Bob. Go back there again and peel that. Uh, Jim, can you do the same also the other one? Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Jim. As I mentioned to you, the bucket with the water, that is the love of God. The response is our son. You know what? God allowed people to come in, in our lives. And he wants us to squeeze that somehow the resources, the love that we have, that is inside of us, we will be able to share to those people around us. But we need to be in love with the Lord because that's where the source of our love the only thing that we could be able to show love to those people around us when we are so in love with the Lord. Now, here it is. God allowed circumstances, the challenges that would come along the way. Why? Because the love that we have, God has blessed us so much. But the only thing, we don't want to squeeze it. Why? Why we don't want to squeeze it? Because we are just so selfish with ourselves. We want to contain all the blessings that we have. But when God allows circumstances, that God allows challenges in our lives, that little by little God starts squeezing to us, but somehow the love of God starts flowing, and those people around us, we start watering their lives. As we, start, we start blessing somebody because the water is coming out. Maybe there's some individuals in this church 
that they're still young in their walk with the Lord. As you would continue to show the love of God to them, you're actually watering the word of God that you just received in their heart. And little by little, the word of God, it becomes rooted and rooted in their hearts. And little by little, they start, they start bearing fruits. But where did it start? Because you and me have shown the love of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you and me could influence our brothers and sisters in Christ by doing the love of God that is inside of us. Don't just keep it or God will allow situation or circumstances that you will be squeezed so hard. Don't wait that God will squeeze you. At this very moment, share the love of God. To our brothers and sisters in Christ. You're not doing this for anything else. You're doing this because we love the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him all the ye heavenly Son and